my ETA. Not three hours, but more like one and a half. Andrew Katay has an emergency on his hands. One of his beehives has just swarmed. A swarm of bees is intimidating. A swarm of bees is frightening. Is a ball of maybe 30,000 bees hanging off of each other, buzzing around. And when they fly through the air, it's like a buzz saw. That wouldn't be a problem if Andrew's beehive was in a forest or a field, but it's in the middle of New York, America's most densely populated city. People are afraid of swarms and, and they make people uncomfortable. So emergency in terms of people actually being in danger, it's very low, but emergency in terms of it giving a bad public face, very, very high. Maintaining a good no, public I, I face not. is all important anyway. because beekeeping has only just returned to New York after being banned for more than a decade. Well, I don't need much. I just need a, a place to put the swarm. Now that ban has been overturned thanks to a group of pro-bee lobbyists and new hives are popping up all over the city on rooftops like this one. Andrew's bees have chosen to swarm on the same day that gardeners are preparing for a gardening class. I'm, I don't want to ruin your roses if no, I cut. No, no, it's okay. They'll grow back. You're being fertilized. Now the plan is to cut you the bees from so the much. rose bush and hope they land in the bucket. Seriously, if anyone dies, I don't think we're liable. I'm just throwing it out there. Anything? Mission accomplished with only Not one yet. minor sting. Oh, someone get some water on these things. Now they're okay. Just give a minute to settle into the bucket and I'll put the lid on. I got one sting on my eye. By bee swarm standards, this was a small one and easily contained. It's like maybe 8,000 bees. Oh boy, is it warmer? 78 beautiful degrees. Uh, certainly take advantage Amen. of them. 66th. This says one way, no? Yeah, 65th. Next way. I do expect. No, Andrew good as he's today was at the forefront <laughs> of overturning the ban on beekeeping in New York, and now he's reaping the rewards. I, I expect that we'll have phenomenal honey from these from these hives so close to Central Park. Yes. How many are you putting in? Five. Today he's setting up on the rooftop of an exclusive private school. I'm sorry to interrupt you guys. Just, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Is there an elevator that way? Is that yes, what it is? Okay. I just, I want to get these through kind of quick. Actually, I'll cover them up in case anybody feels uncomfortable. I gotta, I gotta go as fast as I can because I got another one coming. I put a little water on them so they a little distracted. Bang it down so they fall. Give them some more water. Probably be a little too rough. As well as producing honey, these bees will have an educational role. Queen. I'm an environmental scientist uh, and I teach marine bio to the kids, so uh, we wanted to sort of bring in that whole environmental approach and we thought it'd be really great. Um, and as everyone knows, bees are really in danger right now and with the colony collapse and increased pesticide use. So we're trying to do our part to, uh, to support the, the population. Colony collapse is the big buzzword in bee circles. Across the United States, the honey industry is in peril, with commercial beekeepers losing managed colonies at unsustainable rates. They're going to smell their queen, they're going to stay there. So we're losing over 30% of the colonies every year for the last four years. Kevin Hackett is a leading bee scientist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. He says colony collapse is a complex problem, oh. triggered by anything from pesticides <laughs> to malnutrition, leaving the bees vulnerable to disease. There's many different factors that can stress the bees. 
but what kills them is likely to be a pathogen. What we found out that happens is that the colonies, uh, basically the colonies are under strength at the end of winter, at the beginning of spring. You need a certain number of bees for correct pollination and actually for the, the colony to survive. And it's not just honey production that's feeling the impact. Hackett believes bee loss is the biggest threat to America's food supply. Bees pollinate about one in every three bites of food that we eat. Uh, they're extremely important. If you can imagine sitting down in front of your porridge in the morning, uh, you could eat the porridge without bees because it's wind pollinated. But if you wanted to spruce that up, if you wanted to add some blueberries and strawberries, uh, that's bee pollinated. The colony collapse problem has caused a groundswell of support for honeybees, which contributed to the ban being lifted in New York. Oh, nice. A little over to the left, uh -huh. the guy's shaking furiously. Shame. That's the bee dance. That's how they're telling oh, each yeah, other yeah, where yeah. everything is. Mike Barrett is new to the bee business. He's only had his hive a matter of weeks, and he's showing it off to other converts who are waiting to get their own hives. You know, I haven't had a lot of experience with bees, but these guys are really calm. Mike's interest in bees is twofold. I don't know, I just kind of wanted to see bees. I love honey, and the whole colony collapse thing was something that I was interested in. And bees are so important to all the food in the world. I thought I could do my bit to help there be more bees around. Unfortunately, not even the experts, let alone avid beekeepers like Andrew Cote, know how to remedy colony collapse. I am very concerned, but I'm not a scientist and I don't really have a good solution. I'm just trying to learn, along with everyone else, uh, how to keep my bees healthy. Today, Andrew Cote is installing yet more beehives, this time on the roof of the oldest pub and restaurant in New York, directly under the Brooklyn Bridge. We had intended to put three hives up here. We had a glitch with another building, put six hives up instead. He's very happy with it. They're gonna use the honey in their uh, drinks, in uh, desserts, uh, in meals. Yeah. When I return two weeks later, restaurateur and owner Adam Weprin has had his first taste of honey from his hives. Andrew the beekeeper wanted me here early in the morning to show me something. He opens up the nest, takes off a little cone and says, here, check this out. And it was just beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Anything that has sugar in it, you can replace with honey. and it will... There are big plans for the first honey crop and Adam hopes his local produce will become a restaurant draw sure. card. Well, Mauro is our dessert chef. Mauro does most of the desserts. Mauro doesn't know this, but Mauro is going to be cooking with honey very soon. At this New York City market, local bee products are catching on. I have honey from uh, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and New York State, and Connecticut. We're close to where Andrew earlier rescued the swarm of bees. Now he's selling their produce and talking up the subtle regional differences. The Manhattan honey has a, a higher rent and the Brooklyn honey has more, more attitude. And the Westchester honey has better schools. <laughs> so there's some variation there. <laughs> now seriously, can you taste any difference? <laughs> I can taste the difference. The Manhattan honey has a light citrusy taste with a strong minty finish. And I, I don't know enough about the, 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 the flora in this area to tell you why. Andrew also yeah. believes the locally produced honey will have health benefits for New Yorkers. If one eats local pollen, not only does one get B and B complex vitamins and amino acids, but some sort of immunization against local pollen allergies. Andrew's also brought a couple of packets of bees for new recruits eager to set up their own hives. 
Here you are. Here you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I think it's a really healthy thing for people to take up a hobby of beekeeping. It helps pollination of local urban gardens and urban agriculture is becoming more important in areas like New York City. Scarsdale and Bedford. With another urban beehive on the way, Andrew and his fellow beekeepers are keeping up the fight against colony collapse and making life in the Big Apple a little sweeter. Thank you.